practice. So you did great. I'm gonna just, I will, um, I will put it right in the chat when we go live. Okay, no problem. Yeah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I wasn't uh, watching the uh, chat yet. Good evening to our Semester at Sea community uh, who are joining us uh, this evening for the latest installment of our Wavelengths alumni series. Uh, the Wavelengths originally began as a way to cultivate joy and strengthen our community during uh, these uncertain times while sharing the many talents of our alumni around the globe. Now, we will be featuring a new semester at Sea alum from a different industry, career field, each week on Wednesdays between 4 and 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, we hope you can join us for those uh, uh, Wavelength series here on our official SAS Facebook page. I am Dr. Sergio Carvalho. I say it with uh, uh, my family as a faculty member in the fall 2012, summer 2014, fall 2016, and spring 2019. I am currently in my second year as a member of the faculty staff council. And this evening, I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Kesho Scott. Let me introduce Dr. Uh, Kesha Scott and uh, uh, share with you some of her major accomplishments. Dr. Kesha Scott received her BA in sociology at Wayne State University in 1974, her MA in political sociology from the University of Detroit in 1975, her PhD in American studies from the University of Iowa in 1988. Her most recent awards include being recognized in March 2019 at the Iowa Capitol for her work in education and diversity, and as the business record 2020 Women of Influence honoree. She sailed on semester at sea in the spring of 1991, teaching Introduction to Sociology, Marriage and Family, Global Race and Ethnicity, in the fall of 2008, teaching global social movements, uh, global race and racism, and in the spring of 2015, teach intro to sociology, sociology of family, and sociology of tourism. She is an internationally renowned diversity trainer consultant, an associate professor of American studies and sociology at Greenell College, and uh, uh, an award-winning writer. Kesho uh, was a founding member of International Capacity Building Services, a cultural competency training team that specialized in facilitating both unlearning isthmus and human rights workshops, as well various seminars and training programs that have been successfully adapted for audiences uh, throughout the United States and abroad. In over two decades of developing and learning uh, racism work, Kesho has led hundreds of professional and community-based workshops. She has been keynote speaker for national conferences, as well as a participant on several dozen national and local radio debates, discussions, and public service announcements. Grounded in this extensive experience, Kesho developed an affirmative duty technique uh, for facilitating and learning racism workshops. <clears throat> uh, it is a method that helps shift participants' awareness, commitment, and skill set toward being actively and personally un anti-racist and anti-sexist, rather than remaining merely passive observers. Dr. Kesho, it's a pleasure to have you with us this evening. Uh, it's, it's great to have someone that is an expert in something that is so relevant nowadays, that has uh, brought the attention of so many people and it's so important for us to be uh, hearing uh, your experience and what you have to say. But I would like to start asking you a little bit about your SAS experience. So how did you know about Semester at Sea? You know, 
Um, I was a graduate student at the University of Iowa where I did finish that PhD. And I went down to get my mail at the mailbox. This is, this is a very vivid memory for me, Sergio. So um, there was a long table and there were two people at the table with this big sign that showed a ship just like that one behind you. And I walked over and said, what is this? And they said, it's a semester at sea. Are you interested? And I said, yes. And um, I was originally from Detroit and um, any kind of um, advanced learning I was interested in. I had done Operation Crossroads Africa for a summer um, in West Africa. So the opportunity to be on a ship, visit 12 countries was exciting, but here's the deal. They said, are you an undergraduate? And I said, no, I'm a PhD student. And they said, well, when you finish your PhD, you, you let us know. And do you know from 1984 to 1991, I think I sent a letter to the director of semester at sea every year saying, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer. I wanna be on this ship. And I was awarded the opportunity in 1991. So that's my lovely story of being able to be connected to the semester at sea enterprise. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very interesting how each one of us has some uh, unique uh, uh, experience mm -hmm. related to how we found out about semester at sea. Yes. Uh, it's great to hear that from you. Uh, wow, seven years, it's amazing. Uh, I will ask probably one of the most difficult questions to answer in this interview. What are a few of your favorite stories to tell people when they ask you about your semester at sea experience? Wow, you're right. That is, that is a very difficult question because it's huge. <laughs> there were experiences for the family, there was the experience of the teaching, there was the experience of the interport lecturers. So I think I'm gonna pick two. One was in 2015 when we had Desmond Tutu as one of our interport lecturers. And he was absolutely mesmerizing, talking about the challenges of South Africa post the diminishment of the apartheid and the reconciliation movement. And because my area of study is social movements, I was fascinated at how a society involves itself in racial reckoning. So that was at the intellectual and academic and, and, and you know, one of my personal hero levels, you know, when you just, you're almost just mesmerized, you know, by somebody that you perceive to be a hero. And I think the other um, important moment for me had to do with watching my students in my marriage and family course, what we did is we had a field assignment in every country to look at patterns of marriage ceremonies in each country. And our field trips, um, uh, students were beginning to collect mileage about what legal institutional marriage did to societies and how it holds cultures together. And I, in designing that course, I wasn't so sure how that was going to glue itself together, but it actually worked very well. And uh, I just remember my husband at the time saying, wow, I now understand marriage very different <laughs> because we visited so many countries and we saw the basis of it in terms of holding people together, creating loyalty and holding society. So those are two, I have so many memories, but those are two of the ones I want to start out with. <laughs> yeah, I mentioned to you, this is a very difficult question because every time that someone asks me that question, I have a very, very hard time to answer it. Yes. Because I feel like there's so much and so many experiences, as you said, and I end up saying to people, you know, I think the most, uh, you know, memorable experience was always coming back to the ship. And, and getting back home, it was that sense of I'm getting back home and I'm going to see my big family there and all the excitement <laughs> of getting together after we see and visit the port and all of the experience and be able to go back to the ship and share those experiences was always very exciting to me. Yes. Uh, 
The next question is more related to the impact that Semester at Sea had in your personal life and your career as well. Can you share some of your experience uh, with us? Well, that's a little bit easier to sort of wrap my head around because I, um, I didn't know early on that I was interested in being a, t a teacher and certainly not a university professor. I, that wasn't, I didn't come out of the gate in my community in undergraduate school thinking like that, but I came of age in the 60s um, and the early 70s when issues of race and issues of women's power were, were beginning to, to formulate. And I was thinking that, you know, a fundamental question of one of my first philosophy teachers asked me, do you want power or do you want influence? And I remember thinking, I wanted to be able to be influential. So teaching was what I sort of grabbed as sort of my anchor. But as I went through, through my own education, I found myself navigating spaces where there were a lot of people not like me. I was always trying to find a balance between other international students. Um, in America, the universities at that time were dominated mostly by whites and I wanted a more balanced education. So I was always um, getting the opinions of the international students. And the most significant experience was this. In graduate school for my master's degree, I roomed with a Vietnamese student while we were still in the Vietnam War. And, it, and her experience watching that on television was very different than mine. And I remember thinking to myself, if I ever get a chance to visit Vietnam, I wanna pay homage to her people and, and Americans that were lost there. And I want to tell a more full and honest story of the Vietnam experience for two countries. And when I in fact got a chance to go to Vietnam on the semester at sea, bucket list check happened. And what was very significant is that I did visit those memorials. I did lose touch with this uh, graduate student, but I was able to meet some of the most lovely, warm-hearted uh, people who were forgiving of, um, you know, the role of Americans in that conflict and also the see new bonds that were developing. So Semester at Sea has confirmed so many times in my three voyages that um, global citizenship is certainly one of the goals of a higher education. And I think it was that for me personally, but it, to see it happen in the eyes of students on the ship was amazing. I loved it. And it is something that I wanted for my children. Yeah, I, I can relate to what you said. I think a uh, 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 semester at sea, my experience in my career opened my mind to yes. so many things. I was never the same uh, teacher as uh, uh, I was before uh, going on a semester at sea voyage. I think uh, that uh, that you know, deeper cultural understanding of, uh, uh, of understanding the differences, but also understand that we might be different, but, uh, mm -hmm. but we are uh, human beings. We have, uh, or, uh, you know, our goals and, and a lot of our things are so similar as well. So independent of the culture, independent of the place where we are. And uh, uh, I tell my students that one of the, the first thing that I realize is that, uh, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, that is no, that is no right or wrong way of doing things, but uh, different ways of doing things, right? Uh, I tell them when I'm teaching, for example, I say, you know, we eat with knife and fork here, uh, but uh, someone eats with a chopstick somewhere else and someone eats with their hand somewhere else. And all of those are right ways of doing the same thing, different, but right ways of doing the same thing. And that uh, is, uh, was, uh, you know, something that uh, to me so, so relevant and important. And, and that is one thing that many times people don't realize that an experience like this one of semester at sea, uh, it's so much deeper than just traveling to ports 
and seeing uh, landmarks or anything like this, but it's it's that very much deeper knowledge. Just to finish what I was saying is I I understood much better about my Brazilian heritage and cultural background after I visited Portugal, for example, after I visit Ghana, where a lot of the uh, 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 African Brazilians came and crossed the Atlantic and so on. So I understood it better, right? The whole history of my own country and, uh, and so on. So it was, was amazing. So thank you for sharing that, well, uh, uh, your experience something? as well. I want to. But I know you have uh, uh, you prepared a very nice presentation for us, and I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing <laughs> what you have to say. Uh, 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 you know, uh, your presentation about how uh, semester at sea uh, prepares students for understanding the uh, these uh, Black Lives Matter moment, and it's very important to emphasize this moment that is so relevant to all of us, right? for us to understand and so on. So I will uh, uh, share my screen here with your PowerPoint slides, the PowerPoint slides that you uh, prepared okay. for us. And I'm looking forward to hear uh, what you have to say, uh, uh, Kesho. So please go ahead. Thank you so much. I want to add one more thing before I start my PowerPoint that um, brings me full circle to what, how did Semester at Sea for me help solidify the, the deep-seated drive I had to remain a teacher? And one of the things is, is that I have kept in touch with so many students that I taught on Semester at Sea. I've watched them create and keep very deep relationships with people that they met on Semester at Sea on the ship and people that they met in ports. I have written letters of recommendations for students. One of my favorite students took my sociology of tourism course and is now finishing a PhD you know, in London in, around this particular topic. So I think that's one of the other things that if in fact being a good teacher is also creating people to duplicate yourself, Semester at Sea is an amazing uh, instrument for doing that. And I am sure some of those people that wanna do teaching will emerge and they'll have on their resume, I was on semester at sea. So I'd like to begin by saying thank you for being asked to do a presentation such as this. And, um, and it's an honor to be here. Let's have the next slide, please. So who am I? Well, it's obviously I taught on semester at sea, so I must have some qualifications to do so, but I'm also a mom of four. I'm a partnered person, which means I'm married in this instance. I have an academic career. So I had an academic training in sociology and American studies as Sergio has read. I'm also someone who spent her life in activism from the time I was about 14 doing voter registration all the way up to the small town memorials that I have set up against police violence in small towns in Iowa. I'm a writer. I've written a number of award-winning books, creative writing and political writing about women's lives. I'm a neighbor because I think that is the common denominator of the people that I live in my community with. And one of the best roles since my children are now 42, 40, 31, and 19, I'm a grandma. So I have adult children now. And all of those roles that you see me playing there are part of the things that make up my identity. Next slide, please. My voyages were in 1991, 2008, and 2015. Um, my three children went on the first voyage. My fourth daughter wasn't even born yet. My daughters were 15, 13, and my son was only 13 months. He was the youngest child in 1991, and his feet never hit the ground. <laughs> he had so many aunties and babysitters that it was amazing. In 2008, it was my husband and my youngest daughter, who was, as Sergio said, she was about seven. So my daughter had the honor at seven. And then in 2015, it was again my husband and my daughter, who by this time was 14. 
So the, this meant that at least I have spent one year of my life on a ship. <laughs> and it is, has had a monumental effect on me to know that I have been to some of these countries so many times, created field work that has been instrumental to coming back and teaching at Grinnell College until I retired this December, um, December 12th. Next slide, please. So I want to give a little context of each of those times that I, I voyaged. In 1991, there were four women faculty of color. This had never happened on the semester at sea. So they certainly were being well informed about the kind of curricula diversity and faculty diversity they needed. There were larger number of families with children. As a matter of fact, prior to that, they had mostly recruited people that did not have families. So not only did my three family children come, but I also sent boxes of diapers, I remember. And that was a big problem because we we're trying to preserve the water, right? So we had to figure out how to not throw these diapers in the water. And there were lifelong learners who were grandparents to the students. So students were experiencing an intergenerational kind of impact. The big social move movements at that time were of course the, the LA uh, beating of Rodney King and the Gulf War. By contrast, when I went in 2008, we heard the results of the election in which Obama won, the first person of African descent to be president of the United States. There was a growing number of diversity by students of gender and race. That had been a critical sort of commentary and semester at sea has always kept up with the feedback that students and administrators and, and parents give back. And there was a tremendous effort on the semester at sea to make opportunities for working class students. That's a code for students who didn't have the same resources as many or the majority of the students who have an opportunity to be at semester and see. And that was the year that Amy Winehouse saying, they're trying to make me go to rehab. So these are the contrast in that 2008. Let's go to the next slide, please. In 2015, as I've already said, Desmond Tutu uh, surprised us and joined the voyage, which was incredible because he came on to talk about the new leadership of South Africa. And what I remember being told by the uh, semester at sea dean at the time is that this was the largest number of international students that they had had to date. There was the large number of gap year students. So we had a whole slew of students who had just finished high school and were taking 100 level courses. And they added a very interesting dimension to learning in a, across the spectrum and disciplines. We had the largest number of families with children this semester that I went. So our schoolhouse was huge. So not only did parents help teach, but the semester at sea actually helped create and hire a faculty to guide that activities. There was the creation um, of racial, ethnic, and gendered support groups because unfortunately there were a couple of racial incidents on the ship which did not land very well in people's comfort. So once again, the semester at sea leadership mobilized itself to create support groups so that people would feel safe as we unpackaged you know, the origins of these racial um, not niceties. There was a moment of silence for the first time in the history of semester at sea as we crossed the transatlantic to memorialize the enslaved people that were part of the US slavery. And I do remember we went to Burma and that was an incredible experience to add Buddhism as part of the religious um, studies that we were doing in other countries. Next slide, please. Oh, let me, before you go on, can you go back for a moment? So, and that was also when Tom Brady won uh, the, um, as quarterback of the year and, and, they, and they won. So I just remember that because the students were crazy <laughs> and that was kind of nice because sports um, that they visited in the ports and the kind of sport activities that they had on the ship was an integral part to learning and also creating 
points of unity for people with differences. And I thought that was awesome. Next slide, please. Now, I wanted to pick this topic because I'm, as I said, I am a scholar of social movements and race relations. And I taught courses on global social movements and um, global race relations because we live in a global world. Now, I'm not particularly advocating the rightness or wrongness of Black Lives Matters as much as I want to look at it as kind of a set of glasses, a framework. The same thing that Sergio said, that in having his eyes open to the world, our job is, as educators is to open your eyes to the cultures that you find yourself in. I am advocating learning from this moment in US and global history because I think we live in a time now where higher education is about making people be global citizens, whether that citizenship is in a small town in Iowa where you act locally, but it impacts globally, or whether you find yourself in Brazil where Sergio originally was from and you act locally and what happens in Brazil impacts the rest of the world. The Black Lives Matter as an organizational form has had over 10,600 protests in 50 states in 67 countries. And in the month of June alone, two days, there was a simultaneous protest in 540 cities at the same time. Black Lives Matter as an organization was birthed in 2013 by two, by three uh, Afro-Caribbean women who claim to be feminist and Marxist and queer. They have since developed 38 chapters in US cities and is supported all around the world in the same way that American students during the Vietnam War and afterwards created large global networks for anti-apartheid work, which led and helped to the, the elimination of apartheid in South Africa. And this is really important because when Nelson Mandela left that prison and came out and began to thank all the people that had been part of the South Af African People's Liberation, he thanked fourth American students for keeping the anti-apartheid movement alive. So Black Lives Matter isn't doing anything new. It's continuing the work in a different category. Civics Analytic and Pew estimate that there have been between 15 and 26 million people participating in the US in Black Lives Matter protests. 93% of them have been nonviolent, 60% of them have been white participants, and there have been a generational coalition across age, religion, linguistic, ethnic, socioeconomic differences. So we have built coalitions along lies. And when I say we, um, although I participated in my local chapter, we saw this all over the country. Next slide, please. So I wanted to contrast then that experience of Black Lives Matter with the experience of semester at sea. Because what do students experience? They experience being on a ship intimately with between 450 and 650 students throughout the United States and students from around the world. Many students don't experience that, that in their home, camp home campuses. We visit anywhere between 12 and 14 countries uh, 12 and 14 countries over that 100 days or 103 days. You have 100 faculty from diverse universities and colleges. And what I loved about two of the voyages that I participated on is that we had professionals come and join us to increase our capacity to understand finance and business and marketing and other kinds of specific skills. And I thought that was an amazing addition to the curriculum. What is the practical application of some of these professions in the global world? We had a crew who was multinational from people from all over the world. So the people that fed us and the people that cleaned and the people that kept things safe were from all over the world. We had between 13 and 30 lifelong learners. As I said, they were grandparents. They were people who are committed to ongoing learning. 
and they often shared their professional experiences. So we would often have them in our classes lecturing about the things that they contribute to the world. And we had at least 20 expert interport lecturers, and they were amazing. We had special events and seminars and some very controversial moments. I remember when we discussed Vietnam, for an example, our interport lecturer talked about that before we got to Vietnam. And those discussions were touchy-feely because you could almost divide the um, students and the lifelong learners and the faculty on both sides of the issue of being anti-Vietnam and being uh, for American foreign policy at that time. And finally, we had field experiences in every class with not only paternalistic volunteerism, because I think Semester at Sea has done a great job making missionary tours and volunteerism really hit people's heart and not just be, we're not just observer of what other people are doing, but really the work is connected to what people uh, can do in their own homes and in their own communities and, and is connected to the larger enterprise of what Semester at Sea does, which is open your eyes to how other people in the world live their lives. Next slide, please. I think that because Semester at Sea is planned and it is intentional, I think that's one of the ways that it has a similarity with the activities of Black Lives Matter, that it's an intentional process to take Americans and students around the world in this very privileged way, but using that privilege to be helpful. It's not necessarily critiquing it in the same way that Black Lives Matter working at the local level is trying to address some of the inequalities that operate and create patterns and programs of restorative justice for people in communities, whether it's police violence or whether it's less employment for people who have been displaced or immigrants or whatever the work that Black Lives Matter does as a chapter. Next slide, please. I think I wanna to try to answer the question about how a semester at sea voyage, whether you go on it after you know about Black Lives or you go on the voyage before you know about Black Lives Matter. I think it attempts to answer the question in four large categories and I'm gonna go over them quickly. One, it challenges us to realize that we are interdependent. We are a global world, that globalization has happened. We are one world order Ronald Reagan said as president of the United States, we have one world economy, right? And that one world economy links us up in changing services and ideas and technologies and even cultures. I will never forget taking students to the one of the Chinese universities and we were discussing uh, gender roles and gender changes. And I remember a student in China asked the class and we had a rigorous debate what makes someone an American? And all of the things that the semester C students said, the students said, I speak the language, I wear the clothes, I like the music, I know the uh, films, so why aren't I an American? And it was a very powerful discussion about nationality, identity, and culture. So we, globalization is an opportunity for students to see up front. And globalization isn't something that's happening to students out there. It is also happening to us Americans. It is a two-way street. So I think Black Lives Matter in connecting the dots between the historical past of some of the countries that we visit and some of the privileges of the Western world and Americanization is one of the things that it makes it a very powerful movement to study and because semester at sea students actually see these things firsthand, they're able to more comfortably participate in discussions ar around the issues that Black Lives Matter brings up. The second thing is culture, politics, and leaders. You know, we, as we listen to our interport lectures, we learned about countries that had anti colonial movements. We heard countries that their states had collapsed. Um, uh, we learned about countries that are modeling themselves after the American democracy 
and we learned about countries that are being non-aligned with either the communist world or the Western world, like Malaysia when we visited, who saw itself very different in terms of being in the 20, 20th century and trying to see itself as not aligned with any of the big superpowers in the world. So this intersection between culture and politics and leaders is one of the things that Black Lives Matter does, that its modality for change isn't just protest, but it is also mobilizing artists, getting people to run for office, also challenging people to vote, also challenging people to be on school boards and in, in capacities where they serve communities. Next slide, please. In continuing with this idea of how Semester at Sea can help people understand Black Lives Matter, I think it's the issue of missions and activism. You know, we, we able in those interport lectures, we also learned about the heroes and sheroes of the countries that we visited. For example, I remember how powerful as we studied environmental uh, strategies in Brazil, for example, and we learned about the mothers who chained themselves together in the uh, rainforest so that they wouldn't cut down the trees. Well, what is the difference between the mobilization of grandmothers in that movement and white women who linked arms in front of the Black Lives Matter uh, protesters and said to the police, you're going to have to come to us first. So we see there's a similarity in the mission to bring dignity and fight injustice and the activities of activism across generations and particularly guiding young people to make their own decisions about how they want to contribute, contribute to activism. What students learned on Semester at Sea is that there's no hierarchy in activism, that often all parts of it creates a kind of larger opportunity for societies to change and cultures to change. Also, personal relations and national relations. You know, we learned, as Sergio said, that we all have ways of eating, and there's no right and wrong in how we eat. But there has been a larger standard that has operated across the global world that has almost ranked nations as being better than other nations. And I think Semester at Sea has been one of the institutions that I think has challenged that premise that when we start comparing you know, the 7,000 year history of the Chinese society to the less than 250 year history of the United States, it's no contest in terms of different developments and the longevity and the power of societies to stay together. There's something to learn from societies that have been around a long time and there's something to learn from societies that are younger in age. And what this means is that we have to be very aware of what our misinformation is about other people and about other countries. And at the Black Lives, Ladder, uh, um, Black Lives Matter moment, we're seeing this when we see what can happen in one community can set an agenda in the whole country, not just uh, Trayvon Martin, but also George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. We now, as a result of their deaths, have a worldwide movement critiquing police departments and policing all over the world. I don't know the outcome of that, but all I know is that it has put a spotlight on a problem whose roots are not just in the United States, but are all around the world. So at the personal level, we have to unlearn and relearn, but at the national level, we have to make sure that we're not xenophobic that we don't make judgments about other countries until we understand their historical context for the political and economic decisions they make. And I think semester at sea by having students experience and be taught by people from those societies is very impactful. Next slide, please. I wanna say that past histories of colonialism, imperialism, systemic violence against women, religious do, uh, dominance, neo-colonialism, and the re, uh, formation of the United Nations as an instrument of conflict resolution are some of the more powerful things that students confront. It's one thing to study something in a book, but it's another to go to a country and see 
that colonialism, uh, European co colonialism dominated the world for four centuries and also the resistance against that colonialism brought humanity into the 21st century. At the same time, those past histories can be understood in terms of looking at isms, the rise of anti-Black racism, the rise of the Arab Spring, the rise of the global Me Too movement, the rise and expansion, as I said, of local work at the Black Lives Matter level and therefore how that connects to that global network around policing and justice and immigration and, and increased education and environmental and climate issues. So I think that the reckonings that we're now feeling, particularly in the United States around race, around gender, around identities, around resources, around COVID, around quarantining, all of these things bring, you know, linked together, a semester at sea student have, would already have lived some of these things in a very interesting kind of way by actually visiting countries and smelling and tasting and touching the fabric of that culture. And as many students over the summer have participated in their local Black Lives Matter, they had a taste of some of those things that are in their own communities. Next slide, please. So I wanna end kind of with a personal reflection because I said a lot. And I hope one of the most dominant things you got from my talk is some understanding of Black Lives Matter as a global framework and network and organization. But more importantly, how Semester at Sea in its history since 1963 has been part of the mission to get students all over the world to get to know each other. And that experience is so impactful. So I wanna tell you about two of my daughters. That little girl that you see who's seven, who is now 19, who is now in college in her second year. And her decision to be a lawyer is because one of the field trips that we took was to um, a legal court in, um, uh, in South Africa and to see an, a reenactment of some of the reconciliation trials. And her work in Black Lives Matter was focusing on reconciliation. My other daughter um, is CEO of her company and she won all kinds of award as under 40 and a CEO leader. But her family has been involved in Black Lives Matter as you can see in the bottom there but I remember her specifically making a decision on her 14th birthday on Semester at Sea that she was going to work in international affairs. That is what she studied in college. She actually went to Switzerland and worked in Switzerland um, on, at an internship that really changed her life. She came back and got her degrees in public administration and is now running has run numbers of companies around issues of water preservation and climate issues. So let me tell you, at the personal level, I watched my own children be very much impacted and choose careers in their life because of this experience. They came back and shared this experience with our small community in Grinnell and inspired other people to consider international communities or at least professions that link the larger goals of education uh, together and collectively. So I want to stop there and say thank you for allowing me to make this connection um, of Black Lives Matter as an example of how the lens of Semester at Sea can be very helpful in seeing this as a, a larger movement and simultaneously how Black Lives Matter as the students who will follow on Semester at Sea will be able to bring those critiques to the countries that they visit. And this will enrich their education. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Keschel. Uh, we are receiving uh, questions from uh, our live uh, Facebook audience. Okay. So if you do have questions, please uh, uh, send to us uh, and we will uh, 
try to uh, get do Dr. Scott uh, Keshe to answer those questions for you. I would be happy to. Yeah. Uh, uh, Keshe, it was, it was great to see you and talking about all of those experiences. I could, uh, you know, I was reflecting as we were talking about all of those experiences and so on. And one of the things, as I mentioned before, was, uh, you know, understanding my culture, understanding um, uh, 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 my, my country, my culture, my heritage, by going to some of the places there are, uh, has, uh, you know, deep connections with the history of Brazil as a country, as uh, us Brazilians, as people, uh, and so on. And, uh, uh, one of the most enriching experiences uh, was uh, when I was in Ghana and I went to see where uh, the slaves were kept just before they had to board those ships and cross the Atlantic towards Brazil and the US. And uh, it was interesting to, for me to even uh, learn that uh, uh, we Brazil received more slaves than the United States received. And uh, 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 a lot of our, our rich culture, it made Brazil so much richer and so on because of our cuisine and our, our uh, music and all of that. And so I could understand things that I, I did not understand before. And I went back there and I could see all of that. And at the same time, uh, 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 you know, made me uh, be so much more appreciative of, uh, of us as, as, uh, as people and understand that, uh, uh, you know, we are all unique and we all have our values and it's so special uh, uh, and so on. So all of those visits and if we really open our, our hearts and minds to learn, we have so much to learn. And it's so enriching as, you know, as a person, right? To, to understand this. Uh, there is something uh, here, I think it's coming from uh, Facebook that is asking, can Casho speak to the challenges students of color faced in various sports? Absolutely. Um, I also visited those Cape Coast castle that you talked about. It also so impacted me that I went and did a more extensive research on the slave enslavement of people to find that it wasn't just 400 years of European uh, enslavement, but it was 10 centuries of enslavement by Arab countries. And I learned a larger view that changed my scholarship and thus changed what I taught. So let me try to answer specifically that question in three ways. What was the experience of students of color when they entered ports. First of all, for many students, um, they had problems on the ship, <laughs> realizing that uh, there were socioeconomic differences among the people on the ship, people who had extreme wealth and people who did not. So that set the stage for people getting off the ship and seeing that we visited many countries where people were very poor. So going to Calcutta or going to parts of Ghana or going to parts of Burma, some students of color felt closer to people who were poor in the countries we visited than the students on the ship that were Americans. So they had to navigate that space and find a way to discuss it and to make it more of a, of a, a reality of understanding why. I think the second thing was that students found a lot of similarities between the countries that they visited. African-American students, for an example, saw a tremendous similarity when we went to Kenyan culture and Ghanaian culture. So they saw some similarities in food and styles of parenting and even elements of this jumping the broom that African-Americans do in African-American weddings was part of the tradition of West African marriages. So they saw some retentions and that was a real learning tool. I think the other thing is that there's also the misinformation that people have about Americans. They have misinformation 
um, about Americans, they perceive that Americans mean that there's only the white experience. So if you are a Latina or you are a, a, a Asian American and you find yourself in China, you know, many people have very misinformation about who you are. So many students um, had to be educators to other people in other countries. And that was good because they had to put their knowledge to test. And sometimes I think that they were uncomfortable in that misinformation that other countries had about them, but it created a teaching moment. And that is what was really important to me. So those are the three kinds of things that um, I think make up their experience is that, that I remember. I don't think there were any fights that I remember. If anything, it was more inclusion that people were excited to meet American students of diversity and, um, and, to, and to be able to hear their stories about the American experience. So I think that that was, is, has been an added dimension of how they were able to get a little deeper in the culture and then come back and share that in their classes. Yeah, you, you brought up a point that I think it's very interesting because one of the things that I also appreciate so much about my experience with Semester at Sea is witnessing the transformation that takes place in the lives of the students, right? That right at the beginning, you mentioned about there, right at the beginning, we see a lot of times tensions on the ship because it's a shock for a lot of the students. It's for a lot of them, it's the first time that they are leaving their uh, uh, places. It's the first time that they are among so many people of so many uh, diverse backgrounds and so on. So it's a shock. But as the voyage progresses, you see the transformation taking place. And it's incredible that at the end of the voyage, we feel like so close together. We feel like so part of this family that there is so much hugging and kisses and crying, right? And people not wanting to leave uh, the ship and uh, uh, all of those things. And uh, it's incredible to see that transformation. And uh, even in the classroom, when we are teaching the students, we see how they become more open-minded and you see that right at the beginning they seem to have this very well formed idea of things and so on and towards the end it seems like wow uh you know so much has changed yeah, yeah. You, you didn't realize but you are a completely different person from the first day that you entered this Absolutely. classroom Absolutely. we as as professors we see that uh, that transformation that many times they don't perceive that and and it's amazing it's also amazing many times when we uh, meet the parents and the parents comes to us they come to us and they say you know uh, uh, thank you so much because uh, you had such a great impact in, in my uh, uh, my son or my daughter's life and, and so on. And, and that, is, that is so rewarding for us as professors, as teachers to see that. I want to say that the proof to that pudding is how many semester at Z hookups do we make afterwards? So here it is five years since my voyage on semester at sea in 2015. And just last month, I had a hookup with a semester at sea student that many students have come across the country. And you know, I live in the middle of the country, Iowa, Northwest and East and South, and they've stayed at my house. One student who was from Alaska, her and her mother were driving the US and they stopped at our house for three days. Another student was on route to graduate school and her and her fiance stayed at our house. So these semester at sea hookups are so important after our voyages. We become friends and families. I've gone to weddings. I've seen babies born. <laughs> I've met people who graduated from different programs and I'm part of their family. So this is another plus for the semester at sea experience. For sure. That is another question here. Uh, okay. uh, so much of the conversation around justice and uh, incredibly focused or, or incredibly focused on domestic issues. How can we better incorporate an international perspective into the conversation around uh, Black Lives Matter 
in other justice in initiatives. Thank you. I love that. The reason that I was American-centered around Black Lives Matter as an organizational form and a network for doing global work is because of its origins. But it is its work in, say, issues of policing or issues of war or issues of representation are very global because we have countries that are still being impacted by, the, by colonialism. For example, when students realize that they're studying neo-colonialism in a country, for an example, they're studying how countries are politically independent, but still economically tied up in the economies of the past colonizer. And so you begin to see a connection between how economic justice is fought in American communities, urban communities in particular, or rural communities that don't have the services of urban areas is very similar to how people are fighting for economic justice in the countries that they find themselves when the raw materials of their countries are leaving or their workers are being given poor wages or this notion of having uh, of jobs being sent to uh, outsourced to their countries, which employs a certain percentage of their workforce also has negative consequences with their communities. So I think that I saw that best through the, the ways in which the semester at C people select professors whose work make those international connections. That the work is not American centered, not something you can study in American classroom, but something that you have to be able to witness and see um, when you get to that country. For an example, when we were in Japan, we studied tear gardening because here is a country that has a very small population and populace. And we talked about the ecological uh, and social impact of creating this kind of gardening in urban spaces. And people were then able to talk about how those things to be learned outside of the United States could be helpful in urban areas in the United States. So it's that place where there is an exchange of international ideas. And I think that's what keeps Semester at Sea focused and, and non-specific to just the American or Western experience, but more realizing that global exchange is two ways. It's not one way. Yeah, uh, I would, uh, uh, if you allow me, I would also add to, you know, uh, uh, that uh, Black Lives Matter moment might be more particular to the United States, but racism is everywhere, right? Exactly. It's, it's like, for example, me being a Latin American, I have faced the racism so many places where I travel to because a lot of times it's a lack of knowledge it's a lack of understanding and i think by a, a, a program like semester at sea brings that you mentioned about something that i thought was so uh, important is uh, you mentioned about an example of a student having to educate people in that other culture about differences that uh, in the United States, uh, uh, there are not just uh, uh, white Americans, but there is also African Americans, there is also Chinese Americans, there is also Latin, uh, uh, Latin Americans and, and so on. So that is, uh, you know, we also in some sense educate people when we go to those places, right? Uh, yeah. Where they see also and they learn also about our culture, about our history, about who we are, and helps them to also open their minds and be more receptive to differences and cultures and so on. Absolutely. This idea that America can only be seen through a white black lens is to erase everybody else. And that is a limit so that when we become ambassadors or the students on semester at sea, and they take their engaged experience to people that they meet in ports. It is a fantastic dialogue and a mixture of learning both ways, right? And that's yeah. what I think is the power of Semester at Sea. Perfect. So we are coming to the end. Uh, 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 we have uh, 
one more, actually two more questions to ask you. One is, uh, what advice do you have for any alumni who are interested in following a similar career path as yours? You already have an experience that you shared of a student that uh, got uh, uh, her PhD and, uh, uh, yes. and so on. So yeah, what advice do you uh, give to? Well, I want to say that um, um, in being one of the um, consequences of, of having the semester at CX experience and being in, um, exposed to so many cultures is that it many students say I could go to school in some place else other than the United States for graduate studies. So I think that that's one of the things that I would open myself to going to Oxford or going to the University of Liberia or going to Shanghai University or for graduate school. And this particular student took a course on, in, on semester at sea called Sociology of Tourism. And we did study up tourism, not study down tourism. We looked at the, the life of the elites in some of the countries that we went to. So this student is continuing this research area in um, what we call developing countries. But I think the second thing to consider in terms of using semester at sea as a, as a, a, a guidepost for uh, being in international careers is making real relationships with people that you meet and learning how to nurture those relationships with people over time. And I think that, um, you know, 17% of the people who in American colleges and universities are international students. But what we're finding today is more and more Americans are going to school in other universities around the world. So I think that that would be another thing. They met someone, they were influenced, they kept up and built a relationship. And when they were ready to go to school in another country, they had real networks and real relationships to rely on. Very good. Any final thoughts, Kesha? I just want to say, Sergio, it, this was amazing. Kate, thanks for calling me and asking me to do this. And for any of you that are out there thinking about, should I take this voyage? I want to say, why not take this voyage? <laughs> do what you have to do to make it happen. And for many people who don't have the resources, their churches, their community groups, their universities, all of these people who help conspire to put you on that ship, they, they um, travel with you. So it's not just an experience for you, it's an experience for them. I wanna say one more quick thing. I sent a postcard to my grandmother every, every port that I went to. And in, two in 1991, she still had all those postcards. She still has them today of all those uh, countries that I visited. So that experience helps everybody in your family and people in your community. So don't forget that. Thank yeah. you so much. One final thing just uh, uh, to also elaborate on that is, uh, uh, you know, for any faculty member and staff member that, uh, uh, you know, might be interested in joining a semester at Sea Voyage, I, I both of us uh, could say a very similar thing. Uh, it's a life transforming experience. It's so enriching for us as faculty members, as staff members to have this experience. It really, it really transforms our views of uh, uh, education or views of the world and, and uh, even views of, of all of those uh, uh, you know, moments that we have, like the Black Lives Matter, we understand it much better by this experience with Semester at Sea. So I would really encourage, uh, uh, having gone in four voyages, you went in three voyages. So, uh, you know, uh, there is not a lot that we can say beyond that or experience of you know, wanting to go back and back and back again. So oh, I, I would do four in a minute. Just call me. I'll do the fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to my fifth one. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's amazing. So uh, yeah, please, uh, if you're interested in 
uh, joining Semester at Sea as a faculty and staff member. Just look at our excitement when we talk about Semester at Sea. You're going to understand that very well uh, uh, when you step for the first time on that ship. And, uh, 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 and then you're going to see uh, what we are talking about. Kesho, it has been a pleasure to spend time with you this evening. It was very, uh, uh, you know, it, it was very educating, I, I would say this way, because I learned so much uh, from what you described. It's incredible how you also kept record of your experience with your with semester seeing all of your three voyages. So thank you yes. so much for sharing thank these you. with us. Uh, your work and, and passion is inspiring. Your passion for semester at sea is also very inspiring. Thank you for taking the time to share your expertise with us. We really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. To all of our uh, SAS alumni and friends, uh, uh, we really appreciate your support and, and joining us in our events. It's uh, 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 you know, a semester at sea exists because of this passion for transforming lives and uh, uh, making us better global citizens. Uh, we appreciate hearing about how our alumni are giving back to their communities around the world. Uh, as you consider giving back to causes that you care about, uh, we would like to remind you, our alumni and friends, that Semester at Sea is a, a 5013 nonprofit organization, and we need your support now more than ever. As you know, there are a lot of changes that have taken place that has affected Semester at Sea quite a lot uh, in the last few months. Uh, so gifts of any size make a difference for Semester at Sea and will make a difference in the lives of many, many people who will be having this experience uh, uh, of Semester at Sea. If you're able to make a gift to Semester at Sea, we encourage you to consider a recurring gift each month. Those gifts will have the greatest impact at this time. Uh, join us next Wednesday, October 21st at 5 p.m. Mountain Time to learn more about Semester at Sea Alumni Association, which I have been part of for the last eight years as uh, of, uh, you know, when I uh, finished my first voyage in 2000, since I finished my first voyage in 2012. Uh, from several members of the Alumni Association Board of Directors, uh, you can learn more about uh, Semester at Sea Alumni Association. Uh, do you or someone you know from your voyage have an interesting story uh, to share about how SAS influenced your life or career path? Or do you have a special talent that you'd like to share with the Semester at Sea community? Email wavelengths at semesteratsea.org to be considered for a future wavelengths uh, series segment. And we will appreciate and uh, uh, we look forward to receiving those from you. Uh, I also would like to remind you that uh, Semester at Sea uh, uh, is uh, having uh, all hands on that virtual auction on October 19th, uh, but uh, uh, it's already open for pre-bidding. So if uh, please check it out, go to Semester at Sea website and, and check also the uh, many messages that uh, Semester at Sea have shared on Facebook and participate, there are amazing, amazing prizes. There are amazing things that you can bid on, uh, things that will remind of your voyage and uh, 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 will bring you uh, uh, back to the ship in some sense, uh, uh, remind you of some of the experiences we had there. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening.